This is IBM, the Islamic Broadcasting Network. The following program is sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation, sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the internet. God is the light, God is the light. How great the wonder of the heavens and the timeless beauty of the night. How great, then how great the Creator. And it stars like priceless jewels far beyond the reach of kings. Bow down for the shepherd guiding him home. This is From Darkness to Light. But how many eyes are closed to the wonder of this night? With your host, Harun like Chambel. Pearls hidden deep beneath a dark stream of desires. But like dreams vanish with the call to prayer, and the dawn extinguishes night. Here too are signs. God is the light, God is the light. Welcome to another episode of From Darkness to Light. I'm your host, Harun Chambel of the Islamic Broadcasting Network. We have with us today Brother Ahmed, who became Muslim uh, some time ago. How many years ago was it, Ahmed? Almost four years. Almost four years ago, Ahmed became Muslim. Uh, so we would like to, uh, inshallah, spend this time with Brother Ahmed and hear about how he uh, embraced Islam. So without any further ado, I would like to first uh, welcome Brother Ahmed to the show by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, I'd like to just go ahead and, and get into the, uh, the program and ask you, first of all, Brother Ahmed, why did you become Muslim? Uh, I became Muslim primarily because I believed in the Quran. It, was, um, it convinced me that uh, it was the truth. And I believed that any religion based on the Qur'an um, had to be the true religion. And that was really what convinced me to become a Muslim. MashaAllah. Okay. So, and let's, uh, the second question I would like to ask you is how did you come to this? I guess this is kind of like where the meat of the matter is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you come to this conclusion? What, what process did you go through? What was the first stages of it? Well, I was... Um, it was really just curiosity. I was uh, raised as a Catholic, and I went to um, a Catholic school all my life, uh, since grade school. But I was a very devout, practicing Christian at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, but like probably mid mid high school, I wasn't really satisfied with the answers I was given to my questions about Christianity. So I just started to study about religions in general. What questions were those that they were that you weren't satisfied with? Uh, usually, questions about um, the idea of original sin, like that you can inherit sins, and like the idea in Christianity, and um, the idea of the Trinity was a very big problem. Um, the idea that God could be human and divine, embodied in a person, but then created it was very confusing, and n none of the teachers could really give a satisfactory answer. What were normally the, the general answers that were given to you? Um, people would try and explain, like they would use, um, a lot of the Irish Catholics use the, um, the shamrock four-leaf clover or three-leaf clover as an example, and they'll like break up the leaves, but say from, that's from one stem, and they'll compare that to the idea of the Trinity coming from one God. And that was just kind of, it didn't, it didn't make sense. It was something that they used with children. And then after that, the more questions you ask, you would just get the response. You have to believe in it. That's it. You just have to base your faith in that. And what, uh, when you were going through this period of, uh, you know, asking these questions and not really feeling satisfied with the answers, what kind of feeling did you have in your heart Did you feel was the right way? I mean, forget about what other religions at this point. Uh, but let's, I'm saying like in terms of just you're a Catholic, you've been practicing Catholicism. Mm -hmm and uh, you're very devout, and you're asking these questions that you're curious about, you're not getting the answers you're looking for, what, in your heart, what were you, what direction did you feel like you were going in? Uh, I, 
I honestly didn't really know at the time. I mean, I just believed that um, the logic in Christianity wasn't really very just. I mean, if, if God was just, then um, you can inherit sin, and um, you can really be, like worship a human. Um, I, I really didn't know where to go from there. Uh, all I knew is I disagreed with those basic tenets, and I was I was just feeling lost at the time. Did you have a lot of discussions about this with your friends? Um, I had a few with my friends. They, most of my friends, had reached a point where they weren't really practicing, mm-hmm. and um, I just started to veer towards that path. I, I stopped going to communion at mass. I was still go to mass with my family, but I would stop practicing in the mass. And, mm. yeah. and so, like, what with your friends, what? I mean, what was, was there a common thing that was pulling all of you away from practicing the religion, or was it various different elements? I mean, it was different for everyone. Okay. Um, when you tried to express your, your uh, confusion and disillusion about some of these main principles with your friends, what kind of uh, responses did you get from them? Um, I didn't actually discuss it very much with my friends. It was, um, really? They would just give their opinion, their point of view, that they didn't think was right, or that they thought there was a grain of truth in it, and they would accept that. Right. Um, you know. Did you talk with your parents about this? I, I would ask my parents some questions. I mean, my father was Anglican, so he didn't really comment on Catholicism. Right. My mother was a devout Catholic, so um, I would ask her, and she would give me the standard responses that you'd get from any priest or, right. or nun or teacher. So uh, now pushing forward, um, after you had tried to look for the answers from within your religion, uh, what was the next step for you? Um, I just started reading about other religions and some philosophies. I took a look, uh, a look at Buddhism, Judaism, uh, New Age, Anything that I could get my hands on. I and this reading. is when you're in high school still. Yeah. Okay. So what were like what were some of the the things that you read about that like you know that I guess from the different religions what were some of the different kinds of um, uh, points of view I guess you could say that you were now being exposed to that previously perhaps you didn't know about. I don't know. Just uh, so, like some of the esoteric philosophies were unfamiliar to me. Some of like the mysticism in some religions was fascinating to me because it was very different, it was very colorful, and right. it wasn't what I was used to. Right. But other than that, there wasn't really anything that struck me as being very different from Christianity. Because, I mean, most of the religions I read about either had some kind of intercessor with God or um, didn't really have a very clear-cut um, way to worship. Like, it was very general. Like, Right, yeah. and so these for the I guess for uh, to to summarize basically like it was that very thing which kind of kept you from being totally drawn towards those uh, philosophies or ways of life. Yes, was that element of just either not having a clear uh, path of worshiping God or having something where there was an intermediary between you and God. That's right. Okay. Uh, We're going to step away for a few brief messages from our sponsors. You're listening to From Darkness to Light. I'm your host, Harun Chambel of the Islamic Broadcasting Network. We choose to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We all face unique challenges in life, and through struggle, we progress. But what makes the difference between those who succeed and those who fail? It is a clear conviction in the higher ideals and purpose of life. Have faith. It works miracles. This message is brought to you by your American Muslim neighbors and the Islamic Media Foundation. How great the beauty of the earth and the creatures who dwell on her. How great Then how great the Creator. Welcome back. You're listening to From Darkness to Light of the Islamic Broadcasting Network. We've been here with Brother Ahmed, and he's been telling us about his uh, the beginning of his search in looking for truth. Uh, Where we left off, we were talking with Brother Ahmed about 
uh, his search through different uh, philosophies and ways of life, and how they didn't find he didn't find them satisfying in the 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 root aspect of the worship of God. Now, um, perhaps just for briefly, maybe so that for our viewers that you know, our listeners that uh, aren't too familiar uh, with w- this concept, I'm I'm assuming that most are, but just for the sake of redundancy. Um, how uh, maybe if you could just explain like the kind of uh, thing that you were looking for in terms of worshiping God alone without intermediaries? What does that exactly mean? Uh, I was I was looking for uh, an explanation or an expression of the direct relationship between God and His creation. I guess um, something that didn't deal with intermediaries between yourself and God. And, uh, you know, and I guess without wanting to be uh, uh, unrealistic with, uh, with, our, with ourselves, you know, when we say intermediaries, we're obviously talking about various religions in which some might worship a human being, others might be worshiping statues, others might be worshiping, I don't know, nature, trees, mm-hmm. things like this, these kind of things. It's, it's basically looking for a direct path to God. That's right. Right. So okay, so let's continue. So as you're looking at these different into these different religions, um, what what then happened in the next stage, the next phase for you? Um, the next phase, I mean, I didn't I didn't find anything. Right. I, I didn't even look at Islam at that point. Okay. So I mean, I was on the border of becoming like atheist, of doubting the existence of God. And wow, it took you to that that direction. Yeah, it was. I mean, it it took me pretty far away from, you know, Swat the Mustafin. Wow, how uh, I mean, uh, how uh, to for us to understand the feeling that one is going through in that situation? How could one go from being devout in in belief in God and convicted in that uh, to I mean, I to not believing in God at all? Mm-hmm. How can how does one get led to that? That's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really don't know how to answer that. I can only say that um, I found it increasingly frustrating. Just I mean, not, it, it, not don't getting find, answers, huh? Yeah, I mean, if you don't find an answer, then you get frustrated and increasingly so over time. Right. So that you're getting you're borderline, uh, you know, in, at the point now, borderline not believing that God in the existence of God. Mm-hmm. Now, what what's going on in your head? Uh, what are, what are you looking into? What how is your life at this point? Um, I pretty much felt that I had exhausted all the options because I thought that I, I looked at almost everything. Um, I mean, I I felt kind of purposeless that there wasn't much of a purpose, you know, like in life, trying to figure out like, well, what do you do? What's the point of everything? Do your actions have like, um, is the consequence like uh, meaningful? Right. So, uh, I mean, I kind of reached a point where I was just going along with the flow and not really caring. So. Right. And uh, it wasn't until college that I actually began to study Islam. How what was your first exposure to Islam? Um, well, I was uh, an art major, so I began to look at Islamic art. I had done, I'd, I studied Islamic art a little bit in the past, and I wanted to understand a bit more of the culture around it. And I knew that, like, from like the name like, Islamic, that it like, was derived from Islam somehow. Mm. So I decided to read about the religion just to get some kind of idea about what people from that culture. And this is purely just coming from the background of wanting to, you know, um, be more, have more of a, a breadth and depth of understanding from the art perspective only. That's right. You're not at this point looking, thinking like maybe Islam is a truth. You're just saying, you know, I'm studying art and in order for me to understand this, you know, this type of artwork, I have to know the culture and that's it. That's right. Interesting. So, uh, as you started studying, what did what were you finding? Um, well, I actually, I started to look at books that were written by non-Muslims. So, I started to read them. I wasn't very impressed by them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I decided to take out a copy of the Quran from the library okay. and just read it to start from scratch. Okay. Um, at least that's how I thought of it. So. And so, what was your first experience once you uh, opened the Quran and started reading it? Um... I was very impressed, like the first time that I read it, with uh, its purity, I guess, because I, I, I was accustomed to looking at the Bible, which had 
there were obvious contradictions in it. There had been changes that even we had discussed in, in school in our classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's purity, um, it's justice impressed me. So, when, so w- as you're reading the Quran, um, at this point, you know, was it still purely only looking from the point of view for dealing with the art aspect, you know, so that you can further your education and, and do well in it? Or was it now starting to take a different effect? Uh, it started to change. I mean, as, as soon as I began to read it, I mean, it impressed me. So I started to consider, um, like, is this true revelation? Um, where did it come from? Is it revealed? Was it man-made? Right. I started to think of it in religious terms. Okay. Okay. And uh, as you're doing this, I mean, uh, did you find that there was some kind of a struggle that you were going through, or was it just kind of like, just easy? It was, um, it didn't feel, I mean, it, it, at first it felt like a struggle, because I was, out, like, um, some of the ideas in Catholicism were so ingrained in me from a young age that I had to grapple with them a bit more. Even though I questioned them, it was like throwing them completely away was kind of hard. Um, Give us an example. Um, I don't know, just... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. I really can't give a concrete example. I guess just the dependency on um, religious authority uh-huh. as an intermediary was ingrained in me, even though I questioned it and disliked it and really had begun to stop believing in it. It was just almost an instinct right. from when I'd uh, grown up as a kid. Right, 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 right. Okay. Uh, hold that thought for a moment. We have to step away for a few brief messages. You're listening to From Darkness to Light of the Islamic Broadcasting Network. Sponsor a program on the Islamic Broadcasting Network, IBN. Expose your organization or business name to the listeners of IBN in the Washington, D.C. metro area and nationwide and worldwide through our live internet broadcast. Support IBN DAWA efforts. Make the call and sponsor a program today. Get your name into thousands of homes nationwide and worldwide. For more information, call IBN at 703 2419659 As its mountains pierce the clouds High above the lives of men Weeping rivers for thousands of years Welcome back. You're listening to From Darkness to Light. I'm your host, Harun Chambel. We're here with Brother Ahmed, and he's been telling us his story of how he embraced Islam. Uh, maybe to begin this segment, um, it's interesting the, the where we left off in the last segment um, in how you were talking about letting go of the dependency upon religious authority. And it's it's interesting because in Islam, there is kind of a dependency, but it's not in the same way. It's kind of a, a, the, the dependency upon religious authority is simply like what Allah says in the Quran, in the translation of which he says, ask those who do know, ask those who know if you don't know. In a verse in the Quran, he says this. And so, for an individual who wants to learn about any type of issue about Islam, or to understand how he should deal with this matter, or how she should go about living her life in this way, or so forth and so on, that they should go to the people who know, if they don't know. And usually those who know are people that are elders, people that have knowledge, things of this nature, scholars, people that have been spending their, their lives, you know, dedicated to learning Islam and understanding the interpretations. But the difference is, and this is the u- uniqueness and beauty of it, is that we, where the dependency stops in Islam is, I think, the difference between it and other religions in that we don't have uh, a thing where we have to go to somebody and ask them, you know, uh, to uh, to forgive us for our sins, for example, 
or to grant us this or grant us that. We don't pray to anybody other than God. And so it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because there's a fine line. There's still a kind of dependency there, but there's a dependency until a person has the maturity and understanding to, to uh, accomplish a certain you know, part of his life uh, according to the way of, his, uh, of submission to God. Anyway, enough of my tangent. Um, so, um, uh, so now you've been reading the Quran. You struggled a little bit in the beginning, letting go of some of these tendencies that you were brought up with. Now, what was the next phase for you? Uh, well, at that point, um, I didn't even read the entire Quran uh, before I was convinced that it was the truth. It was, uh, I'd, uh, I'd, been, I'd started reading some of the short surahs. Right. And um, I don't know. I mean, just like uh, I felt that uh, everything that was said was true and that like there was um, like a burden had been lifted that I'd found something unique mm. and amazing. And I mean, I was I was so convinced that it was true that I decided that any religion based on the text, which I had come to believe that it must be a, a revealed book. Right. Um, had to be the, the true religion. Just simply from, you know, opening the book and reading it without any preconceived notions, you just, as you read, you read, you read, you were just convinced that this had to be revealed. That's right. Wow. So, what, uh, was there a certain point, like, because you mentioned previously just now that you didn't read the whole Quran mm -hmm. before, you, before you realized it, but, you know, it didn't take you to read the whole Quran to realize it was the truth. Was there a certain passage or verse at a, at a point where you just you read it and then you just paused and you're like this is it. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain verse that you can re that you recall that just like blew you away and you were like this is it I'm convinced. It was a Surah Al Insharah, Alam Nashrah Laka Sidrak. That made me cry. Really? Yeah, that that surah made me cry. Wow. It was, it was, it was at that point that uh, I knew that Islam was the truth. Was it, and what, what was what verse specifically was it that blew you away from that? Because it's a short surah, but yeah. you know, which uh, which verse was it where it just like you were like enough? Uh, uh, see, with uh, with every difficulty, there is relief. For in, in the matter of yeah. in the matter of yeah. It's interesting too, maybe to give a little bit of uh, explanation with that. The Arabic language, when you look at that verse. Uh, and you, and when, when we read it and it says فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى the, the alif lam in the Arabic language uh, expresses um, a certain object or thing so when you say al-usr usr is, is hardship or difficulty so when you read that Allah is saying al-usr so he's saying the like a, a specific hardship you know or the hardship a hardship a specific you know difficulty that with it or through it, right, mm -hmm. comes, and then he says, Yusra. He doesn't say El Yusra. He doesn't say with, with the difficulty comes the ease. He says with a difficulty comes eases. Yusra. Mm -hmm. He just leaves it general. And this in itself, when a person reflects, understands that this is a way of us seeing the vastness of God's mercy. That we can be tested with one simple difficult thing, one hardship, one test. And from passing that test, getting through it, that God gives us not just one ease, one success, but much success. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, SubhanAllah, it's deep that, that, that you mentioned that. So, uh, so, and going, so at this point, did you just finally say, I, I, I submit, or was there a kind of... Uh, a, a bit of a process at this point still. No, that was it. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Did you take your shahada by yourself, or did you do it formally with some people? By myself. By yourself. Yeah. When was it? I mean, and at that point, did you have Muslims that you knew in college? Um, I didn't know any Muslims at that point. Really? <laughs> no. So how did you know how to take the shahada, or um, was it just something you just declared was, in your heart? Uh, my roommate knew a Muslima. Right. And uh, I, like, I was trying to find out if there were any Muslims any of my friends knew. Right. And um, so I got, uh, I, I met with the Muslima for just an afternoon, like the next day or two days after. 
asked her, how do you become a Muslim? <laughs> she, um, sh- she told me about the Shahada wow. and some of the basic um, requirements of Muslims. Right. And, so, and as soon as I got the information after she left, I made the Shahada. Wow. So how long was it before you were actually able to meet uh, more Muslims and things like this? Um, shortly after was, this was just before Ramadan. Wow. And um, I decided to try fasting that Ramadan. So I went to uh, the interfaith center at school, got the names of the Muslims in the MSA, um, met them, started to get to know them, asked them about Salah and Psalm, and, like the practical aspects, like how do I worship? Wow. It's interesting too that there are, there are many people that are I mean I'm I'm exact the same as you but there are many people like the two of us that at a time in a, a young person's life where for many of us that it's like our first time away from uh, from our homes and from our families when we get into college and we're able to actually just let loose and we don't have somebody looking over us and this that and the other that there are so many people that actually at that point like find God Mm -hmm. and turn to God or I should say maybe God finds them you know and that you know he opens their hearts to you know submission to him and belief in him and you know it's it's really an amazing phenomenon Um, so in closing brother Ahmed we would like to ask you um, what kind of uh, parting advice could you give to us and to our listeners Advice? Yes. Um, I would advise never, ever stop believing or underestimate the Quran. Like, don't leave reading it. Always read it every day, as much as you can, even if it's just a passage. Mm. And, um, just don't underestimate it, you know, because after time you, you get used to, like, certain surahs and ayat, and you hear them in salat when they're recited. And sometimes you don't really stop and reflect over them. Thank you very much. Jazak may Allah reward you, brother. So in closing, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give us success in this uh, talk that we've had and through this talk that we've had. And we ask God to help us and to protect us from the evil from within ourselves and from the evil uh, that is uh, around us that may approach us. And we ask uh, God to, to help us in our affairs, in our daily lives, and uh, in struggles with that we have within ourselves and with others. So with that, we, we, uh, we say that the all praises are due to God. And sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sahbihi wa sallam. For all of those people who are believers, we say to you, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And for all of those people who may not be believers, just remember that it's absolutely never too late. Thank you, and join us next time on From Darkness to Light. God is the light everlasting. 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 This program has been sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation. Sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the Internet.